The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a presentation of Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Welcome back to Q Who. This is episode 213, and I'm your host, John Russell. This is the quintessential Whovian podcast uh, where we talk about classic Doctor Who and we review products and we talk about missing episodes, existing episodes, anything from the first eight doctors we talk about. And that's what we're going to do today is talk about um, some classic Who all the way back to the William Hartnell era. At the end of season one, there was a story called The Reign of Terror. It was a historical. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know something about the story, even if you haven't seen it. Uh, there's an audiobook that's been released recently in the UK. Hasn't um, been released in the US yet, but I did manage to pick it up from a UK retailer and have it shipped over here and have had a chance to listen to it and now I want to review it um, uh, I would have loved to have gotten it in time to have included this commentary about it this review of the audiobook for the previous episode of Q Who where I finished my discussion on my watch through and listen through of season one of Doctor Who but uh, it wasn't to be but uh, this just gives me the chance to go ahead and focus only on this audiobook. I'm not going to um, uh, talk about my watch through of season two just yet. I'm going to hold that off for a few weeks, I think. And um, uh, there's a lot coming up and a lot going on in my personal life. So, uh, yeah, we might take a little break after this episode for a week or two. And uh, then I'll come back and we'll discuss, you know, whatever whatever is topical at the time. <laughs> or maybe I will get on with my Season 2 um, discussion. But uh, in the meantime, yeah, I just wanted to do, to do a short episode of QHU today to cover my review of the audiobook of The Reign of Terror, which was written by Ian Martyr. And read by Jamie Glover. Now, um, I I really do enjoy Ian Martyr's work on the novelizations. He did several for uh, the Target Range. Um, some were really good, and some were not as good. But um, as for the Reign of Terror. Um, this is this this is a really good novelization. He didn't stray too far from the story. He didn't expand too much on it. Um, if he did expand, it was, you know, just to sort of flesh some things out. But he really brings the story across and the characterization across. And I think maybe this being a historical story and being a, a lost story, at least partially lost, um, he probably decided to stick a little bit closer to the script which uh, you know I applaud especially back in those days in the, in the 80s when this came out I definitely applauded it when the writers of the novels stuck real close to the script because we didn't have those stories to enjoy in any form we didn't we hadn't yet um, had telesnap reconstructions and things like that we didn't have the audio recordings all we had were these target novels and they were precious so when it came to the missing episodes i really wanted them to stay pretty close to the scripts nowadays i i don't mind it when they expand things like the edge of destruction um Nigel robinson really expanded that script he really went in more in depth and gave us a lot more background information added scenes and so forth and it really helped the story um, as for this one, Ian Martyr does stick fairly close to the 
to the script and it's kind of to its benefit um, he really brings it across in a very vivid way and a very enjoyable way I remember enjoying this book way back in the 80s when I first read it but to hear it being read now by Jamie Glover um, it's it's really come alive I, I really am in I have been enjoying um, listening to his telling of it his reading of it um, so it, it adds a whole new dimension and of course the great thing about these BBC audiobooks is they actually add music and sound effects here and there and uh, to help bring it alive even more and, and this one I think is one of the better ones uh, certainly one of the better ones I've heard recently um, it's really really good and um, so I can highly recommend it it um, it brings across a story that I thought was pretty interesting to begin with and, and kind of makes it even more interesting um, so in some ways I like the novelization even better than the the televised story which of course we only have four episodes of episodes four and five are sadly currently missing from the archives but they did animate them um, several years ago uh, it was one of the early animations too and uh, as I discussed in the last episode of Q who that, that that's kind of a m maligned uh, animation uh, within fandom circles and it's I think undeserved because um, I, I will say it again I said it before I'll say it again it's my favorite of all the animations because I think it is the closest one to reality is the closest one to actually recreating these lost episodes there's just one little scene one little sequence and one little scene where things kind of went off the rails for a minute <laughs> where they did some really fast cuts and tight close-ups and things and it, it was just a little bit odd and jarring but uh and it's kind of fogged the perception of it i think by a lot of fans and so based on that quick uh, snippet they judge the entire animation and i don't think that's fair it, it was a wonderful animation and it deserves our love and it deserves our appreciation and we're lucky to have it and it helps to fill in season one a bit so uh, I, I think it was wonderful but um, that's neither here nor there because we're here to talk about the audiobook which I think um, is uh, wonderful it uh, brings the story to life in a way that even the episodes and even that animation didn't quite accomplish so uh, it's a story I really like um, I don't you don't hear a lot about the reign of terror and, and I don't know if it's highly regarded in, in fan circles or not but uh, and maybe it's just overlooked and I think sometimes it's overlooked because the impression that people get is that that animation is poor and it's not it's it's a really it's a really good animation um, apart from that one short sequence um, so it's 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 a story that's just isn't talked about much it isn't necessarily highly regarded and I think it deserves to be it's one of those that I kind of wish they would actually find the other two episodes even though as much as I love the animations I wish they'd find those two episodes and at least and complete the story and then people might be able to um, watch the whole thing and appreciate it more because I, I think it deserves to be appreciated more um, because it's a better story than than it's than a lot of people seem to 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 feel and it, you know it also gets lost because it's a it's a historical and a lot of the historicals aren't looked upon as favorably as favorably as they should um i love the historicals they're amongst my favorite um stories especially in the Hartnell era i i really and I think they only did one true historical during the Troughton era, which is the Highlanders, and that's a wonderful story. So, um, they, you know, but you don't hear much about a lot of these historicals, except for people who just say, oh, I don't like historicals, they bore me, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one isn't boring. It, 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 it uses its six episodes well, and it uses, uses six episodes to its advantage and uh it's it's a lively story it, it paces along really good there's 
you know it's it, it's an interesting point in history um, you really feel the tension within the story you really uh, you know a lot of times you're nervous for the characters because you don't you know even though you do know <laughs> because we've seen it you know so many times over the years we we know the heroes are going to make it out and you know and it's Doctor Who from 1964 um, we knew nobody was probably going to die at that point they had killed off any um, major characters so you kind of knew things were going to work out in the end but even so it brings the tension it really brings the tension so you're nervous for these characters the entire run of the story and you're just you kind of think in the back of your mind are they going to get out of this are they going to get out of this are they going to get out of this unscathed and uh Largely, I don't think they do get out of it unscathed, but I think it strengthens their characters and their relationships. I think this one kind of solidifies that first TARDIS team's relationship um, more than probably any other story. Um, and, you know, it makes sense. It's, it's right at the end of season one, so we should get over a certain hump at that point to where this... this uh, TARDIS crew, this unit, is tight-knit from this point on. And even though it started with um, the Doctor landing there to sort of throw Ian and Barbara off the ship because he has a, you know, a disagreement with Ian at the end of the sense rights <laughs> and take something he says the wrong way, even though it starts that way, the great thing about it is it by the end of it, they're such a close-knit family group now. And that's that's how you feel about it, and it uh, it it really you know it just brings the whole thing together. It brings the TARDIS crew together, and as a viewer, it's very satisfying. As a reader, it's very satisfying. As a listener, it's very satisfying for things to end that way, and uh, you know it's it's just a culmination of the whole season season's worth of adventures to have these characters to come together and feel like a family at last and so for that i think the reign of terror has a lot of value and probably for me for season one it's probably my second favorite story of course we all know marco polo is my favorite but um you know as strong as stories like the daleks and the aztecs are um marco polo and the reign of terror despite being historicals um they they do more for the bonding of this tardis crew than any any other stories within the season um with the possible exception of the edge of destruction which i think brings them together by the end because it's it's the one that flings them further apart um during the process of it but by the end of that two episodes they're they're starting to appreciate each other just a little bit and uh but by the end of the reign of terror they really are coming together as sort of a, a family unit as as it were and uh, i really love that about this story i and i love the adventure of the story i think the guest cast is really good really strong and uh yeah it just it just all comes together and it, it's 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 the novelization is beautifully written and kind of brings all the strengths to this of the story you know together even better it makes it mesh even better so ian martyr did a wonderful job wonderful job one of one of his better novelizations i would say um so yeah i give um the audiobook for reign of terror a solid four out of five tardises i think it's wonderful and you should pick up the cd and uh, give it a listen as well it's it's absolutely worth having it's absolutely worth listening to and i think jamie glover was a a splendid reader um they usually pick you know uh someone from the tardis crew like uh uh caroline ford or um or oh why am i going blank or william russell to read these and um i when i first heard they were releasing this i was hoping it was going to be william russell because i really love his readings but 
having listened to, to Jamie Glover, who has absolutely nothing to do with Doctor Who, I still think he actually did a really fine job um, reading this Target novelization. So, uh, yeah, go out and pick that up. Uh, you really should. If you enjoy your audiobooks at all, um, and you're like me and you want you want physical media, then you should grab it. If, if you hate physical media for, for some strange reason, and, and if you do, you're weird, <laughs> um, then, yeah, of course, um, go ahead and, and grab the, the digital version, which is out there to purchase, and probably a little bit cheaper than the CDs just for that reason, because you're not getting something physical. But I prefer to have it in hand and be able to put it on the shelf next to the actual book itself, and, and that's just me. I'm old school. But uh, it's worth having. It's worth the money. Um, I only paid about uh, $22 for it, I think. Well worth it. Well worth every penny. Um, um, one of the best novelizations I've heard in, in a while. So, highly recommended. Go grab it. Alright, and we're going to take a bit of a break here from Q Who, like I said, for a week or so. Maybe a couple of weeks. Because um, I'm going to take a little vacation and uh yeah so a much deserved vacation hopefully for myself and my wife and uh so yeah we are going to take a break and not have to worry about production for a while and, and recording podcasts and what have you uh, we need that breather so uh but we will be back here on uh Q-Who real real soon with uh, more reviews more discussions I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I hope you'll come back for the next one when it appears. And you all know the drill, of course. Uh, Until next time, please stay tuned. You have been listening to a fan production for Dream Realm Enterprises. This is a not-for-profit program.